Hey guys, Pastor Eric here. We're just about ready to get started with our service, and if you'd like to invite a friend, you can just text them our website, crossoveroc.com. When they click on that, they'll be able to join our service. So God bless you guys. We'll be back in just a few moments. to you and welcome to Calvary Chapel Crossover this morning. Excited that you are tuned in with us as we're continuing our study in the book of Revelation. We're going to have today's study uh, in which we uh, study the final paragraph of the book of Revelation, the seven closing statements of the Bible. Very significant. And then we're going to have one last study next week in the book of Revelation. So two more studies this week and then next week. And then as we finish our study next week, we're also going to share in communion. So prepare your communion for next week as we have our final study in the book of Revelation. And uh, just looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us today. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word we thank you, Lord, for the book of Revelation. Indeed, it's as you say, Lord, blessed are those who read and, to, and those who hear and those who keep the words of this prophecy. Lord, we have been blessed. And uh, Lord, we pray that as we continue our study this morning, that you will minister to us, Lord, the significance of these closing statements of the Bible. And so we uh, lift up our time to you now. We pray, God, that you will help us to enter into a time of worship, that our hearts can come before you, Lord, and worship now this morning. So we commit our service into your hands. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
Amen. All right, well, let's worship the Lord together. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Joy in the house of the Lord. God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God is still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Joy in the house of the Lord, God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise, we shout out your praise. We were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted. Redeemed by his grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Joy in the house of the Lord, joy in the house of the Lord today. Shout out your praise, joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your Son of God, Son of Man, His life poured out for all. See His hands, see His scars, His love can't be denied. Our God is high and lifted up, it is across my only the body shed delivers me. Our Savior's arms are open wide. Love so great, the cries of Christ. Every day and all we owe, He bears it as His own. A 
brought life We are free to live in Christ alone Oh, our God is silent it up It is a cross my only plea The blood he sheds delivers me Our Savior's arms are open wide Love so great the cross I see the Lamb of God I see the Father's love And all to Jesus we owe He paid it all It is a cross my only plea The blood he shed delivers me Our Savior's arms are open wide A love so great the cross It is a cross my the blood he shed delivers me Our Savior's arms are open wide A love so great the cross of
Jesus and new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. It's stronger than darkness and new every morn. Our sins, they are many his mercy is more our sins they are many his mercy is more our sins they are many his mercy is more
Lord, there is no greater thing than um, knowing you, Lord, and uh, we just want to thank you um, for this privilege that we have of knowing you personally, Lord, and um, just uh, being able to uh, seek you and worshiping you and um, know that you are here in our midst, Lord, and um, we just uh, want to turn our eyes on to you this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back.
us to worship the Lord and a couple of announcements here for you. Next week, as I mentioned at the beginning, next week we'll finish our study in the book of Revelation and we'll take communion together. So if you want to gather the things that you need for communion next week, we'll share in a time of remembering the Lord's death and in communion together with him. And uh, also Thursday evenings, we are continuing through the book of Galatians, and the Lord's really been meeting us and blessing us live stream or in person here in Tustin Meadows. So if you'd like to uh, be in person, we leave the doors open and we have a nice facility. We're meeting inside. We encourage you to join us uh, this Thursday evening uh, in the book of Galatians. And... Um, Let's see. Other than that, if you'd like to worship the Lord in your giving, you can use our website uh, for online giving, or you can use our P.O. box here in Tustin. We're box four here in Tustin, California, 92781. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, as we come to this final section of your word. Lord, the closing of the Bible. Lord, the, the final word of the final word, Lord, here in the Bible. We ask, God, that you will just open our hearts, Lord. We ask you will strengthen us to receive with meekness the implanted word. We ask that you will just speak to us and pour into us, Lord, this morning as we study your word now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, as we come to Revelation chapter 22... Uh, the last paragraph here, verses 12 through 21, we're looking at the final statements of the Bible to us. There are actually seven statements that I want to cover here uh, in, in the Bible's closing remarks to humanity, you know, throughout the generations as the Bible has been handed down. Here's the, the final message of the scriptures to those who would study it. You know, parting words are often very meaningful and very important uh, with those whom we love. When, uh, say, someone is going on a trip or we're not going to see them for quite some time, many times the very last things that we say are, are words like, I love you. We want them to remember and there be an emphasis on the fact that we, we love them. Uh, on another occasion, it might be, I'll be praying for you, depending on what they're facing, how they need prayer support. Your final word to them might be, I'll be praying for you so that they have that confidence. Or perhaps the words, God is with you. You want them to be confident and strong that the Lord is with them. So parting words are often very meaningful and important words. Jesus' statements on the cross, his parting words to humanity as he was laying his life down for the sins of the world, uh, his words were very significant. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It was a prayer for those who are crucifying him. But these were the final words of Jesus as his life was coming to an end. He told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. He said, as he was uh, uh, finishing his time on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. The payment for sin had been accomplished. And then Jesus' final words as he hung on the cross were, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And the Bible says, having said this, he breathed his last. So the final words of the Lord Jesus Christ during his earthly life, very significant, worthy of study. And so too, there are seven statements here made in the book of Revelation as the Lord is, is finishing his word to man. Seven final statements from God, uh, seven meaningful and important words to man as God is signing off uh, the scriptures and so we're going to look at these. And the first statement is found in verses 12 and 13, where Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and 
the last. So the first statement here from the Lord Jesus Christ is that he is coming quickly and his reward is with him. This statement places Jesus at the very doors of his second coming. And he wants us to know that he will come suddenly and that he is at the doors. He wants us to live in light of this. And all that we've learned in our study of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, these are the final seven statements of importance. And the first is, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Listen, guys, this is motivation for us to be serving the Lord faithfully. Amen? Because he's coming quickly. And when he comes, his reward is going to be with him. We shall be rewarded for our faithfulness to him. Jesus says that as we have served him well, that we can expect to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. And so Jesus is encouraging us to be faithful and to be watchful. Very important. It's one of the last of the seven things that God said to mankind, that Jesus was coming quickly and that he was going to be rewarding his faithful servants when he returns. Jesus, in the parable of the the talents, uh, said these words to the servant who was faithful. He said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And so the Lord is coming, and his reward is with him. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and end, the first and last. Jesus the originator of all things, the Alpha, the one to whom all things shall return in the end, the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning and the end. He says he's coming quickly and his reward is with him. You know, I think about the Lord as the originator of all things, to whom all things shall return. I I think of that about that on a personal level, how that the Lord has um, created and originated uh, the things in my life to make me the person who I am today, just like he has made you. You know, we were all born into this world as infants. We had the potential for growth, development, and maturity. But it's the Lord through, you know, hands-on from our parents and instructors and teachers and life itself But you see, it's the Lord who has vested in us, not to mention our knowledge of who God is and the knowledge of his word. You know, I spent the first 24 years of my life not knowing anything about God or the Bible. But the Lord then came into my life. He has taught me about himself and he has vested in me over the last 30 years the knowledge of his word. And I want the Lord to have the return that he is looking for. He has originated abilities within my life and within yours. And then all things will ultimately return to him. But I want these things to be returning to the Lord now. I want to see the the purposes and the plans of God accomplished in my life today. I don't want to get to the end of my life and realize that the Lord had invested so much, but I just flashed out along the road of life and never really surrendered and committed myself to the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't want to have that mistake. I, so my prayer is that, Lord, the reason that you have vested certain things in me and invested certain things in our congregation, our people, oh God, by your power, by your good hand being stretched out upon us. Lord, beyond our abilities to even make the right decisions, Lord, you work in us and bring forth from our lives the purpose for which you have invested so much. I think the the desire of the Lord, first of all, is our relationship with him. God has revealed himself to us 
that we might know him and that we might love him. He wants this. This is the highest purpose for what he has invested in us as his people, that we might know him and that we might love him, that we might apply ourselves in our personal relationship with God. And secondly, is our service towards others, that we would be reaching out to others in this world around us with the resources that God has built into our lives and the power of his Holy Spirit that is resting upon us. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, he's the originator of all things. It shall all return to him. May he be getting his return in our lives today. Amen. Because he is coming quickly and his reward is with him. Secondly, uh, verses uh, 14 and 15 Blessed are those who do his commandments, John says, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. He says, but outsider dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. So the second statement here at the closing of the Bible is blessed are those who do his commandments. This statement stresses the importance of keeping God's commandments. It's important to him, and he wants us to know this. So as he is signing off to us in his word, first he says, I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me. But secondly, he says, blessed are those who keep the commandments. You know, Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus desires. If you love me, Jesus says, keep my commandments. Guys, husbands, maybe your wives have quoted uh, this scripture to you and said to you, honey, if you love me, Keep my commandments. In other words, your wife's saying, honey, listen, if you love me, just do what I ask. <laughs> Please pick your socks up off the floor. They go in the, you know, they go in the hamper and, you know, these different things. Please turn the TV down. If you love me, turn the TV down. I'm trying to read, she would say, and you're, you know, blasting the, the game. But, um, you know, we understand this principle. If you love me, if you love me, Keep my commandments. That's what the Lord said. Uh, uh, In John 15, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And and so we are the friends of the Lord. We love the Lord. And, And Jesus said, You know, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You know, Jesus is in his role. He's the Lord. And we are in our role. We are his servants that he graciously looks upon and calls us friends. And so Jesus says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Uh, John took issue in his first letter with those who were sort of pretenders. They would pretend before others that they loved the Lord And so John took issue with them, 1 John 2, 4. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And so, um, you know, the, the importance that the Bible stresses, blessed are those who do his commandments. Notice that they may have the right to the tree of life. We saw this tree of life Uh, along the banks of the water of life proceeding from the throne of God. We looked at that uh, last week. And so those who do his commandments will have the right to the tree of life in eternity and that they may enter through the gates into the city. We have access into the city uh, because we keep the commandments of God. But outsider dogs, verse 15. So, uh, you know, if you've got a dog in eternity, he's going to have to be an outdoor dog, right? He can't come in. Outsider dogs, the sign says. But actually, 
uh, this phrase, dogs, does not have anything to do with animals, but it has to do with the unrighteous. They, they didn't make it in to the kingdom outside. They're outside the kingdom. Uh, outside are dogs, and John says, and sorcerers. Sorcerers are those who practice magic or those who delve into witchcraft or those who... Um, you know, sort of uh, spiritists. These are sorcerers. Interestingly, the the Greek word from which we get our English word here, sorcerer, is uh, a word from which we get our word uh, uh, pharmacy, pharmacy. And so many Bible commentators, and I agree with them, they look at this word that's translated sorcerers, and they, they believe that it also relates to drug use. You know, the partiers, the, those who like to get loaded, you know, they say, well, marijuana is legal, you know, so they're, they're getting loaded. But the Bible calls it sorcery uh, because it opens a person up into realms that are unnatural uh, and into spiritual things. And so, you know, drug use um, is, is called out in the scripture, as well as sexual immorality uh, is mentioned here. Uh, those who are living in any form of sexual immorality, uh, God has designed sex between one man and one woman in the bond of marriage. Anything outside of that is sexual immorality, and it keeps people out of the kingdom unless they turn to the Lord. So outside are, are dog sorcerers, sexual immoral, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. They're out. They're not a part of the kingdom. You know, a lie is how the fall began, right? When God created the heavens and the earth and he placed mankind upon it in the garden, man and his wife Eve, everything was in perfect harmony with God until the serpent came in and he began to feed lies out. The serpent began to feed lies out to Eve. And when she received the lie, she sinned against God and she fell. God says, all liars. God doesn't want anything that has to do with the lie in his eternal kingdom. Now, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed to to provide forgiveness uh, for sorcerers, for sexually immoral, for murderers, for idolaters, for liars. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed so that all those sins could be washed away. But those who refuse the blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins are out of the kingdom. And so um, the, 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 the statement uh, here in the closing of the Bible is, is this, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter through the gates of the city. So the third uh, statement here in our list is found in verse 16. And it again comes from the words of Jesus, where Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. So Jesus testifies here that he is the one who has sent to us the things that are contained in the book of Revelation. They have come from Jesus himself to us. This is the, the, the third statement as the Bible is beginning to sign off. This is the third statement that the Lord wants us to take with us. Jesus has sent us the book of Revelation. The words, I, Jesus, there at the beginning of the word uh, verse, this is the only place in scripture where Jesus talks like that, where Jesus says, I, Jesus. He uses his own name and he speaks of himself, I, Jesus. Uh, This puts an emphasis on the authentication of what he is saying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. Hey guys, we are the church. We are in the church. 
Jesus has sent to testify to us these things. God wants us to know this. God wants us to take a hold of this book of Revelation and bring it very close to our hearts to make this book, uh, you know, to take this book personally, uh, to be very uh, personally related to the book of Revelation. Jesus says, you know, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. But I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. And so it reminds us of first chapter where Jesus says, you know, blessed are those who read and those who hear and those who keep the words of this prophecy. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. Jesus said, I am uh, the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and the morning star. Jesus is promising the new day. He is the bright and the morning star. Interesting, verse 16 is the last self description that Jesus gives of himself. This is the last in the Bible where Jesus describes uh, himself, that he is the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. Well, the fourth statement, uh, as the Bible is closing, uh, the fourth of the final statements is found in verse 17, and it is an invitation to come and partake of the salvation that God is offering to the whole world. Look at verse 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Very interesting. Very significant. As God is signing off in his word, he is sure to leave an invitation for all who desire, all who are willing, let them come. Let them come and partake of the water of life freely. You know, God is not trying to keep people out. God is welcoming people in. The message of the Bible is not a message of God keeping sinners away from him. The message of the Bible is God devising means through which he can bring his banished ones home. For God is, is gathering the world to himself. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he has given us his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God is gathering the world to himself. And so as God signs off in his word, one of his final words is this to the world, come to me, come to me. Don't let anything keep you from coming to the Lord. God is calling you to come to him, to believe on Jesus Christ, to receive the forgiveness of your sins and to inherit all things. So the Spirit, verse 17, that's the Holy Spirit. And the bride, those are the believers, say, come. Let him who thirsts come, the scripture says. And whoever desires, whoever desires. Listen, do you have any desire to know God? Do you have any desire to be forgiven? Do you have any desire to go to heaven when you die? Maybe you would say, Eric, yes, I, I do desire these things, but I'm such a sinner. Well, notice the Bible doesn't say whoever is worthy. God knows you're a sinner, and that is why he is inviting you to come. Jesus said, I have come to call sinners to repentance. The Bible says that he ate with tax collectors and sinners because they were worthy. No but because Jesus had come to reveal God to them that they might turn in faith and find forgiveness and everlasting life. Listen, God's word to you at the closing of the Bible is this. Come, come and partake freely. 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the scripture says, and thou shalt be saved. So the spirit and the bride say, come. This is the last offer of the Bible. You know, the Bible makes many offers, but this is the last one. And one day it will go out for the last time. Because one day you and I will take our last breath. This offer expires upon death. <laughs> it's only good while we live. If we come now, we can find forgiveness. But if we die without it, the offer will have expired and we won't get a second chance. This here is the last offer that the Bible gives. Someone said that it is fitting that this great invitation closes the book of Revelation and the Bible. Charles Spurgeon said, All the prophets of the Bible, all the apostles, all the promises found in the Bible gather themselves up and they focus themselves into this one burning ray. Come to Jesus. Come and partake of the waters of life freely. Indeed, it's the message of the whole Bible. God loves you and God wants you to be a part of his kingdom. Well, this offer expires upon death. Don't leave home without it. You can make your peace with God today and come and partake of the things that he wants to offer to you freely through turning your life over to God and believing and following Jesus Christ. Well, the fifth statement as the Bible closes is found in verses 18 and 19. The fifth statement here is actually a warning. It is a warning to anyone who might attempt to tamper with God's word. God has given us his word. Amen. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. God has given us his word. And so he warns mankind not to tamper with it. And I believe that what we have in our Bibles from Genesis to Revelation is in fact the message of God given to mankind. I believe that we have it in a very pure form. I believe that we can trust our whole Bibles. I know not one heir in all of the scriptures. And I believe that God's word has come to us and we have it in its form uh, in which he has given it. So look at the warning in verses 18 and 19. The scripture says, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things that are written in this book. So God is warning. If anyone adds to these things, adds to the scriptures, writes things in there that God didn't actually say, adds to the scriptures. The Bible says, if anyone adds to these things, God is going to add to him the plagues that are in this book. Notice with me that God knows the one who would tamper with his word because God will judge him. The scripture points out here. God is not unaware of who might try to add to the scriptures, God knows exactly who they are. In verse 19, if anyone takes away from the words of the prophecy of this book, God shall take away his part from the book of life. Now, the book of life has our names written in it. And so someone who would try and remove parts of the scripture to try and make the Bible say what they think it should say and thus removing parts of scripture... God knows exactly who they are. God knows what their names are. And if God so desires, he can erase them out of the book of life. I'm pointing this out, not really to emphasize the judgment of God. My, my real point here is that I believe that God has been able to preserve his word for us so that we can 
trust that it is his word and believe that it is his word and then to live our lives by it. The Bible says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for, uh, for reproof, rebuke, for teaching, for instruction in righteousness. I'm paraphrasing a little bit there. But then it says this, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So God has given to us in his word everything that will make us mature and thoroughly equipped for every good work. That means God's word is preserved for us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said, but my words shall never pass away. Do you know what that tells me? That tells me that the words that Jesus spoke, that he wanted to be recorded in scripture, are there because he said that his words would never pass away. So I believe that God has safely preserved his counsel for us. From Revelation 1 1 to, Gen to uh, Revel from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation chapter 22 21, God has carefully preserved his word for us. And so God wants us to have confidence, and God warns against anyone who would tamper it as God is signing off here at the end of the book, the good book, the Lord is warning anyone who might tamper with his word. But you know, the, these warnings are found in other places of scripture as well. Deuteronomy 4.2, the scripture says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor shall you take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 12, whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor shall you take away from it. In the Proverbs, the wisdom literature, wisdom, Proverbs 30 says, every word of God is pure. He's a shield to those who put their trust in him. And then the writer says, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. And that's some wisdom right there out of the Proverbs. I can give an amen to that. So the fifth remark of the Lord, as he is signing off at the end of the Bible, is a warning not to tamper with his word. Well, the sixth statement is found in verse 20, and these are the final words of Jesus that are recorded in the Bible. Verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely I come quickly. Those are the final words of God the Son in the Bible. It's the final thing that Jesus himself, speaking for himself, says to us, and it is this, Surely I come quickly. Actually, it's a double emphasis, isn't it? As we opened these statements looking at Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. So here we really have a double emphasis. Listen, guys, God wants us to live in the light of his soon and sudden return. He wants us to live every day as if he could come today. It's his plan for our life. In the final words of Jesus, think of it. The final words of Jesus in the Bible, surely I come quickly. Amazing. John replies, amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. John's ready for the Lord to come. And uh, I hope that, that you are too. John uses the word, um, uh, come Lord Jesus, he uses the Aramaic word Maranatha. Maybe you've heard people uh, greeting one another. Maranatha. It's the term come Lord Jesus. And so even as the last words of Jesus are here in verse 20, surely I'm coming quickly. Also the last words of man, God word, are found 
here in verse 20. The last words of man towards God. The last words of man towards God are these. Even so come, Lord Jesus. It's a prayer to meet the Lord, isn't it? To see him face to face. That's significant because the first words to man, uh, excuse me, the first words of man towards God found in the Bible are found in Genesis chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. And it's the occasion where God called to Adam. God was looking for Adam, and he called his name. And the scripture says that God called to Adam and said, Where are you? And Adam said, and these are the first words of man towards God in the Bible, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. So significantly, the first words of man towards God in the Bible was, I heard your voice and I was afraid. But the last words of man towards God in the Bible are, Come, Lord Jesus. It shows that something very significant has happened between the opening chapters of, Jesus, uh, of Genesis and the closing chapters of Revelation. What changes a man's countenance from, I was afraid to see you, to, oh Lord, I cannot wait to see you. What changes a man's countenance and attitude? The cross. The cross lands in the middle between those two statements. For it was on the cross that God's Son died and shed his blood for the sins of the world. The Bible says that God loved us and that he washed us from our sins in his own blood. The Bible says that uh, no greater love has any man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life for for us. He has taken us, Jesus Christ has taken us from a place of saying, I, I was afraid, I feel naked, I want to hide myself. The cross takes us from that type of a place to a place where we say, oh Lord, I can't wait to see you. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The cross has brought reconciliation between man and and God. The shed blood of Jesus has forgiven us of our sins and reconciled us to our heavenly Father. So John says, even so come Lord Jesus. And then the final and seventh statement of the Bible as it signs off is found in verse 21, which says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Very significant. The very final words of the last page of the Bible are a pronouncement of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ upon God's people. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And so wonderful, the goodness of the Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, as we look at these seven statements, very significant, very heartwarming and encouraging. Let me just cover them quickly. Uh, statement number one, behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. Number two, blessed are those who do his commandments. Number three, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. Number four, the spirit and the bride say, come, and whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Number five, if you add to these words, God will add to you the plagues in this book. And if you take away from these words, uh, God shall take away your part from the book of life. <laughs> Number six, surely I come quickly. And number seven, 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So, wonderful. We close out the book of Revelation here. We actually have one more study that will spring from the book of Revelation. You say, Eric, um, I've only got 21 verses uh, in Revelation uh, chapter 22. Uh, You don't have a 22nd verse in there, do you? Because that would be adding to the word. No, I don't have a 22nd verse. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at Genesis 1-1, which says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then we're going to look at Revelation, the very last verse, which says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And we're going to look at what transpired between Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens of the earth and how God brought us to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ being with us all. We are going to take a sweeping look at the history of God's redemption of mankind and it's going to be fascinating. It's one of my favorite studies. I can say it's fascinating because it doesn't belong to me. Uh, I received it from a man that uh, I, I respect out at Calvary Chapel Bible College, a man by the name of Dave Shirley, Pastor Dave Shirley. And so um, we're going to look at this next week, and it's going to be our final study in the book of Revelation. Uh, you're going to want to make sure and be with us for that. Uh, I'm, it will give you just a, a, real, a real understanding of Genesis to Revelation in a very simple form that I think that you will really appreciate. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your word and who you are. We thank you, God, that you are the creator of all things. We thank you, God, that you have reconciled us to yourself through Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you have brought us to the grace of Christ and that... Now, Lord, we come to you accepted and forgiven, having eternal life through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I would just pray if there's anyone watching who is yet to really come to that place where they know that their sins are forgiven, help them to pray to you now, Lord, and ask you for forgiveness. Help them to declare to you, Lord, And may they purpose in their hearts that they believe in Jesus as the Savior of the world and help them to follow you, Lord. Bless them, Lord, the one that is seeking you and is open to you. Bless that one, Lord, and bring them into the fold of God, we pray. We thank you, Lord, for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. So happy that you were with us uh, this morning. And uh, we look forward to our final study next week in the book of Revelation. All right.